Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a while since I've done anything on the Land Rover. I've been working on the Porsche for, well, quite a while. I haven't had much time in the workshop, really, because I've been traveling quite a lot with work. But anyway, one thing I want to do today is to um, fit the, take the, the rear door off, fit the cat flap, not the cat flap, the, um, the flap, the lower flap, which I've got over there. And I want to fit the chain holders, which I've got um, which some of you might remember me buying sort of, I don't know when that was, a year ago or, or six months ago, I can't really remember. So I'm going to remove the, the door, fit the, the flap, the lower flap, and line up the chains. So I've got to find all the bits first, but I'm pretty sure I know where they are. But uh, yeah, see how we get on. Okay, so just going under the Porsche and going to the back here. Um, those are the old sides which I took off um, and swapped them for the, for the nicer ones. But behind there you can see... I have the flap and somewhere down in that box or that box I have the chains and fittings. Okay so that didn't take long, I found them pretty quickly. Um, I actually also found some, some parts that I bought for the Porsche in there which I didn't realise were in there so I've put those on the shelf now. Um, but anyway so there's the flap in all its glory, I don't know if I can get it all in. Um, I bought that. Crikey, uh, probably about 25 years ago I bought this, just after I got the, got the, got the Land Rover. Um, I, I wanted the first, one of the first things I wanted to do is take the roof off and drive around in the summer. So I did that by, by buying this, um, but uh, never really installed it properly. Um, so um, what it used to do is, I mean I used to be very careful, but when it used to flap down, it used to it used to obviously rest on the um, on the tow hitch, which is why all those dents are there. Uh, but they're probably not all from me; uh, they were there when I got them as well. So actually, looking at it, got a bit of a repair job to do there. I've got to put some more rivets in. They are actually spot re uh, spot welds there, but um, they've obviously broken off because of the repeated banging against the uh, the tow hitch. But I'll have to do some repair work there. But anyway. Um, oops, what's that there? So these are the the chains which I picked up from from um, I was going to say eBay actually it wasn't eBay it was um, although he advertises on eBay Kleinanzeigen which is a, a a thing specific in Germany which I've mentioned before but as a contact I've got up north I think he's near Kiel where I actually got the um, the uh, safari roof from but anyway he sent me these as well i think they were about 35 euros or so and uh, a friend of mine the guy who owns the uh the swiss military series 2a um who lives on my street uh, he gave me this which is i think it's an old uh fire hose or something but that works perfectly for for wrapping around the the chains when they're done so I've got to find some appropriate um, nuts and bolts for that. Look at that there, what does that say? Oh, I've got 17 euros, it says there, but 17 per side, I think. Yeah, 17 per side. Anyway, so I've got to find some right nut nuts and bolts. I've got to work out where they actually sit. Because I know there is, on the other side of this, there is a plate here, which is a strengthening plate. And uh, I've just got to work out where they where they go. So yeah, I'll be be drilling that a bit later on. Okay, so I found four sets of nuts and bolts, and this is basically why you never throw anything away because these are all original off the Land Rover from the restoration. And yeah, fair enough, they're not new, but they will work absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy happy to have uh, happy to have found them, you know. So um, those will obviously go through here and here, both sides, and actually if you look, see if I can show you, if you look under here, yeah you can actually see that pretty well, so that is the strengthening plate for, tho for those brackets, so it's actually a lot higher than I thought it was, so it's right at the top there, so just going inside the car again, it's base, oh shit, oh, I just banged my knee on that bloody tow hook, okay. Um, it's basically there, so I'll have to do some measurements to get them in the right place. Um, but if I if I hold that up there, 
then I'm guessing it's going to be about there. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure a bunch of you guys have got these things, so um, that's where I'm going to do it, right there. So first things first, I'm going to remove the rear door. Okay, so, um, messing around there with the door and trying to get that stopper uh, out is a bit of a pain, um, but uh, I'm sure there are better ways of doing it, but uh, yeah, don't forget to take it off before you try and take the door off, which is what I did. Anyway, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try the flap. Not because I don't think it'll fit, because it's been in there a thousand times before, but... Also, that's when I put these on uh, during the restoration. Finally, I get to use them. So, that's how it looks. Which I think is pretty cool. Obviously, you can get the cat flap to it, but I haven't got that. But what I was... Oops. What I was going to do is just for a hot day is put that on and then also take the sides, uh, the door tops off I mean, um, just to make it a bit more airy. So I'm going to try that today. Okay, so I've just propped that up there just to make sure it's nice and flat. I've got it slightly leaning up a little bit because I just feel as though that's that's the way to do it but I reckon I'll probably fix it around that sort of level okay so I've made my marks and I'm hoping it's about right in fact it's looking a bit low this end hmm. let me check again okay so I wasn't 100% sure that that was actually level there so I got a long piece of wood to light across the back and I levered it up a little bit so I actually raised it raised it up a little bit uh, I have now marked the um, the brackets there. What I've actually done is I've, I've just searched on, online and some of them are, are level, but some of them have turned them slightly down to follow the angle of the chain, which I found is more logical. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove the flap, drill the holes and fit the brackets. Okay, so I have got that flap on, uh, which I'm very pleased about. So, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Oh, one side is actually slightly tougher than the other. Really stable. Looks really good. Really pleased with it. Okay, so my camera just died right at the last moment there, or right at the wrong moment, um, and just showing you how how stable that is. And I did put them in at a bit of an angle. It seems much more logical to me that those sort of follow the same angle as the chains. Um, and as I say, so look if you can see, those bolts go perfectly on that strengthening plate there. So I'll put a bit of copper grease on there just to protect them against the elements. But what I'm gonna do now is do a bit of tidying up here and fit that, uh, that hose to it. And then um, maybe put in some of these um, missing rivets here. That's what I'll probably do. Okay, so um, I've just, removed one of those old rivets there um, and clamped this down so I can straighten the, these, uh, these two pieces of metal up. Because um, it's like a sandwich just here, it clamps two pieces of metal 
and I found the right size rivets. Don't ask me what size they are, but they'll go in there and I'm just gonna go through and put them in now. So, oh, that's good. That's the right fitting on that, that rivet gun. There's usually always one tail or something stuck in there from last time. There you go. So, let's have a look. I don't know if you can see that very well, but. There we go. I suppose the only thing, the only negative thing with the rivets down there is that the, the heads or the, I suppose you call them the tails, I guess, will push against the rubber on the, um, you know, the rubber seal on the back, but well, not much I can do about that because I haven't got much choice. There you go, they're going in nicely. I don't know why they're missing. I don't know why somebody would have bothered taking them out. Maybe they broke, I don't know, but uh, seems a bit strange. Okay. Tell you, when you do a restoration, you end up with so much material left over that you can just keep going and it makes jobs like this really easy because more or less, or more often than not, I should say, you've got all the bits to do the work, which is really good, right? So I guess doing a, uh, a second restoration um, would go a lot more smoothly and a lot quicker. He says, not that I've got one <laughs> worked out, but I'm sure it will happen at some point. As I say, I'm still looking for a 109 project, which I can either buy as or convert into a station wagon. That would be fantastic. Ouch. Okay. So, what about those two there? I'm going to leave those for a minute. But there we are. That's looking a lot better. As I say, I've got to do these two as well, but essentially the spot welds, <coughs> excuse me, are still in there, so I'd have to try and grind those out somehow or, or drill them. But uh, I've also, that's really bent, that thing. So I don't know, I'd have to, have to try and straighten that out somehow. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it for now. Okay, so the next job is to cut that hose. Okay, trying something else. Okay. 
Okay, so it's a bit windy, so apologies for that, but I'm pretty much there on the flat. So, oh, there we go, yeah. So look at that, I'm really pleased with that. Right. A bit of rubbish, but that is, oh man, I'm sitting on it now, and that is absolutely, So, yeah, actually, I've got one last thing to do. Let me have a look. I think it's this one. Or oh, have I got another one in there somewhere? I thought I had another one. Maybe this one. No, maybe it is this one. Look at this. The finishing touch. Oh, no, it's not that one. <laughs> Just a minute. That was too, too thin. Let's have a look. Maybe this one then. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, perfect. Oh, bums. No, oh, no, that scratches against the, uh, the chassis. So that isn't the one after all. Think that. What about this here? Maybe that one works. Okay, so none of those work. Back to the drawing board. Okay, so I've just pushed it all the way through. It's not that great, but uh, it obviously rotates with the with the thing. So that'll have to do for now until I find something else. I don't know what would have been original in that actually. Maybe one of you you guys can let me know what would have been original to hold that in. But anyway, I'm going to probably take the door tops off now and then just go for a bit of a drive. Okay guys, so that's what it looks like with the door tops off and the rear door off just with a flap. It's obviously quite airy. It's <laughs> quite cold driving along, but uh, certainly a bit of a summer feeling. Obviously it's gonna be far better when I get the roof off, but before I do that, I've got to get one of these, um, these hoops which goes over here, these bars which uh, you can connect the seat belts to, otherwise I can't do it. So that's all right, I'll get that done. If any of you have one which you want to sell, uh, then let me know because I need one. That's in, that's in. Cool, so off we go. See you next time.